numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Where were they brought I don't know from? anything about any numbers. In the very beginning, there was the numbers. In the second, it was about making a political statement as well as terrorism. And the third, the evolution of mankind's greatest fortune, weakness, well-being, security, and power, technology. Black Ops 4 does not have a traditional fleshed out campaign mode like all previous Call of Duty games in the series, but there is a lot of story lore hidden in each of Black Ops 4's modes for players to find. The story of Black Ops 4 is very cerebral, similar to Black Ops and Black Ops 3's campaigns. It is a fill-in-the-gap story or stories taking place 18 years later after the events of Black Ops 2 and 20 years before Black Ops 3's time. It is a psychological thriller mystery, all told through inferences, where players have to put all the pieces of information together to find and discover the answers for themselves. The story is playable in the Specialist Headquarters where players can play combat immersion tutorials and skirmishes of each of the in-game multiplayer specialists to learn and master each specialist's strengths and abilities. Each completed tutorial and win in the skirmishes, unlocking a hidden random cutscene and piece of intel to the game's story. The story's concepts are unique, puzzling, and very interesting. Difficult kind of narrative to follow, a genre that you don't see very often in games, which personally I am a big fan of. So let's break down the story of Black Ops 4, its world, its themes, plot points, taking a closer look at all the characters and references to the previous Black Ops games, as well as explaining the ending, which respectfully is pretty out there. Starting things off, we are introduced to characters Savannah Mason and Lucy. Savannah Mason is a CIA operative. She is also the world's first ever trillionaire and is the leader of a classified experimental program known as Project Blackout. Savannah and Lucy come to visit the grave of Jessica Mason Green, who is also the birth mother of Lucy. Upon reflecting to Lucy about her mother, we get a flashback of Lucy's mother, Jessica, leading a covert operation with mercenary specialists Aaron Baker and Donnie Walsh, also known as Battery and Ruin. As Jessica and Aaron are about to breach the door, Ruin discovers that their targets inside seem to be completely aware of their presence. Donnie tries to call off the breach, claiming the mission to be compromised, but is too late. Jessica enters the house first and is gunned down easily, along with both Donnie and Aaron, suffering severe injuries in the firefight. As Donnie pulls Aaron away from the gunfire, Jessica is seen still alive, badly wounded, and is not ready to go down without making a final stand. The flashback ends with the plausibility Jessica died that night, and Savannah tells Lucy how Jessica was very brave just like her grandfather. And who could her grandfather be? The man himself, Alex Mason. So Savannah and Jessica are both, in fact, Alex Mason's granddaughters. We then jump forward where specialists Katsumi Kimera and David Wilkes, also known as Recon and Prophet, are flown to a private facility where they are greeted by a fully healed Aaron and Donnie, along with many other mercenaries, the rest of the in-game specialist cast of Black Ops 4. Savannah greets the specialists, telling everyone that she didn't assemble all of them to start wars and battles, but instead to help her change the world. Hmm, that sounds like an interesting job for a team of mercenaries. After the events that unfolded after Jessica's death, over the past five years, Savannah has been on the lookout for finding people wanting to fight to make a difference, or for the greater good, recruiting the greatest elite soldiers, assassins, and military specialists across the world. With all the recruits on board to work with Savannah, she puts all the specialists through a combat prototype simulation training program, where the AI instructor of the immersion takes the form of none other than Sergeant Frank Woods. Oh yeah, welcome back, Frank. The AI Frank tells the specialist that he is going to turn them into the ultimate super soldiers, outfitted with the best gear, equipment, and tactical abilities to get the jobs done and winning the battles against an unknown threat, whatever that threat is. As the specialists go through their training, we cut to Savannah having multiple dreams about many confrontations throughout her life, with characters Jessica and Raul Menendez. That's right, the Nicaraguan arms dealer and terrorist leader of Cordes Dia from Black Ops 2, who appears to still be alive? 
Black Ops 4's story has multiple story arcs all going on at the same time. The first one being the relationship between Savannah and her sister Jessica, the second one being the specialists and their missions, and the third, the situations with Frank Woods and Alex Mason, who are also both still alive and young. But how was this possible? The last time we saw these characters, Frank Woods was crippled and living in a CIA retirement home called The Vault, where he would die of old age a year later after the events of Black Ops 2. Alex Mason, after the invasion of Panama in 1989 during the Just Cause military operation, Frank Woods got tricked by Raul Menendez into shooting him, presumably dead with his body missing without a trace. And Raul Menendez was killed at a secret drone control base in Haiti in 2025 by Alex Mason's son, David. By the way, where is David? It turns out Savannah resurrected Frank Woods, Alex Mason, and Raul Menendez from her secret program Project Blackout. It is here that it is revealed that Project Blackout is an experimental program of some kind in resurrecting people back from the dead, with revived subjects referred to as archetypes, with Frank, Alex, and Raul being the three of the first four successful ones resurrected. Savannah would go on to have a relationship with Woods and use Woods to brainwash her grandfather, Alex. Man, Alex just can't get enough brainwashing, poor guy. We also learn that Savannah's sister Jessica was completely against Blackout, calling the project unethical and morally wrong. While Savannah believes Project Blackout can make the world better. You're out of your fucking mind! My project is beyond our wildest dreams. I made this real. Me! It's not ethical. You've seen what happens. How is that a better world? People are dying. The enemy doesn't play by your rules. Right. That's why you stole theirs. <sighs> what happened to you? Ugh, you know what? It's over. I won't let you do this. The specialists as well also begin to catch on and question Savannah's plans, where he, Zen Zen, also referred to as Seraph, tells Donnie to investigate for himself the discoveries that she found about Savannah. They come at night. Yeah. I've heard grav boogies, jetpacks. Masaki says there's something underground. What something? Something Savannah doesn't want us to see. And what I found in one of the hangars behind a desk. Disturbing. Beyond disturbing. You don't get disturbed. What the hell did you find in there? Go to the hangar. See for yourself. Based on this information, Savannah plans to use each of the specialists for her Project Blackout and replicate new versions of themselves. Sounds like Savannah is building an army of some kind. Sticking with Savannah's story, Raul Menendez tells Savannah it is a matter of national security that action must be taken against her sister Jessica to secure the safety of Project Blackout, and that he has sworn to protect the project by any means necessary. I have sworn to guarantee the success of this project. You better back the fuck off. It is out of your hands now. I will take care of it. I will fix this. It's too late. Look, you can't, you can't do this. All right, she's my sister. Was your sister. He tells Savannah that he will personally take matters into his own hands to have Jessica and her daughter Lucy killed if Savannah doesn't address the matter herself. Scared, desperate, and out of options, Savannah tries to reason with Jessica and with her grandfather Alex, who Jessica has blindfolded, that if she makes any attempts to stop Project Blackout, her life and Lucy's will be at stake. Enraged and upset by this, Jessica assaults Savannah, where Savannah, during the struggle, grabs a gun and shoots Jessica, killing her. Your life is in danger, and Lucy... Lucy? My daughter? Yeah! In shock and disbelief, Alex is taken by force to a secret facility where he continues to have his mind brainwashed, where he breaks free at times to know the whereabouts of his granddaughter. Continuing with the specialist, Aaron walks in on Donnie reflecting on the events that unfolded two years ago, and why the enemies they both encountered that night did not finish them off when they had the chance. 
Not sure what to make of all that, Donnie gives Aaron a tape recording he received from a mysterious benefactor with a heavy digitalized voice saying the following. Listen to me very carefully. Watch your back. Everything you know is wrong. Everything you know is wrong. That sounds very familiar. A lie is a lie. Just because they write it down and call it history doesn't make it the truth. We live in a world where seeing is not believing, where only a few know what really happened. We live in a world where everything you know is wrong. So the specialists are all being played and used for Project Blackout and the threat, the unknown threat that all the specialists were recruited for to fight in the first place is really Savannah, according to this mysterious benefactor. Well, you know what they say, the more things change, the more they stay the same, right? I have plans for you, American. You should have been my finest agent. I tried to make and kill my own president. Who is Nexus' target? End us now, Woods. Mason! Your best friend, Alex Mason, is dead. By your own hand. No! Salazar. He played us all. He was working with Menendez. The fuck, how could he do that, man? What are you talking about? He's one of us! You've destroyed CIA operations worldwide. You've put the entire Winslow Accord Alliance in jeopardy. And for what? Do you even know? Do you have a fucking clue? You're being used. We're all being used. Don't you see that? With contact confirmed and all the specialists now compromised, Savannah orders to have all the specialists terminated. Now that Savannah is a murderer and a potential wanted felon, Raul tells Savannah that her and Project Blackout will now belong to him, and they will work together to make the project a success. Although Savannah comments that Project Blackout never really was her vision for a better world, and with everything that she has done and sacrificed to reach this point, raises the big question of just how long will this Pyrrhic victory of hers last. Project Blackout is thriving. Sites are under construction all over the world. How is it? Three. Jessica's death 12. was not in vain. Our work Five. will turn the tide against the Crimson Cancer. Your vision of a better world is upon us. Zero. Oh my god, no. 25. No, not my vision. Four. We've been working toward this common goal together. Four. This has Zero. been... Six. It was always your vision. Seven. You figure it out. Saved from an unknown benefactor and escaping from his assassination attempt, Donnie makes his way to a safe house location instructed to him where he discovers the mysterious benefactor is really in fact Jessica. Jessica escaped and survived from her wounds and for the past two years has been working in hiding as a hacker. So the Jessica Savannah shot and killed with Alex Mason present was an archetype and not the real Jessica. With Donnie and the rest of the specialists reunited, they decide to join forces with Jessica and go to war against Savannah and her followers. We then catch up with Alex Mason who has been moved to the Asylum, a location in the world of Blackout, where he is being brainwashed by the numbers technique, the same exact brainwashing that was used on him during the Cold War. Where Frank Woods, with orders from Savannah, has been brainwashing Alex to reverse the effects of his vegetable state and to make Alex kill his granddaughter Jessica. Savannah, you are one twisted woman. Frank successfully manages to stabilize Alex's mind, but fails to get through to him directly, telling Alex that he is still in the box. Four, zero, five, four, no. twenty. His sister. No, you're still in the box, Mason. Her sister. Two. One. Fourteen. fourteen. Archetype. Yeah. Both of us. This reference could likely mean the time when Frank was a prisoner of war in Da Nang, Vietnam in 1972 when he was tortured and left to die in a cargo crate by Raul Benendez. And Frank implies this reference to Mason so Mason can break free of his mental state as well as change his memories. Hoping to get through to Alex more directly, Frank brings in the most influential person in Alex's life, the one and only Viktor Reznov, the legendary leader of the Russian Red Army during World War II, and Alex's closest friend when he was in imprisonment at the USSR labor camp in Vorkuta in 1963. 
where Reznov sabotaged Alex's brainwashing and put his own numbers into Alex's mind to exact his revenge on those who betrayed him. It is revealed here that Victor Reznov is the fourth and first successful archetype created from Project Blackout, and Frank uses Reznov in an attempt to bring Alex Mason's memories back, telling Mason that he is real and survived his escape out of Varkuta and has been alive all these years. Well, I guess when all else fails, just give Reznov a call. Yeah, I brought him back. These are your fucking numbers. My numbers. No longer. All right, he's in here. You ready? Duh. Mason! Yeah, it's better be goddamn good, because you woke me up. Mason! You look like hammered shit. It's all in your mind, Woods. Reznov. Oh, fuck! No! Mason! Mason, Mason, stop! Stop! He's real! He's right here! He made it out of Verkuda. I want you to look at him. Mason, look at him! It is me, comrade. Reznov. Frank, what the fuck? Yeah, El. He was the first. The first what? The first archetype. The end. Well, hopefully that all made sense and any questions about Black Ops 4 story mode. Now, I'm not saying my thoughts are 100% accurate or written in concrete here or anything like that, but that is part of the fun and purpose of this story, for players to make their own interpretation. And this video explained analysis is simply my interpretation of what I believe to be going on, and where the story could be leading towards in the Black Ops universe. So what did you think? Sound off in the comments section and let me know some of your thoughts. And until next time, this is Omaha, signing off. Fucking Reznov. <laughs> Good old Tricky Vic.